Hi everyone, in this video I want to talk about two books that I have. The books are called Lectures in Abstract Algebra and they're written by Nathan Jacobson. So there's two books and the first one is Basic Concepts and the second one is Linear Algebra. So these are really old books. I don't know if you can see the cover there. Lectures in Abstract Algebra. It's written in cursive. It's really uh, fancy. Uh, the University Series in Higher Mathematics. And this one says uh, the same thing. Let's take a look inside these books. So this is the inside cover. It looks like someone bought it for $5 uh, a long time ago. That's about what I paid for it uh, many, many years ago. Let's turn the page. So Lectures in Abstract Algebra. Interesting. Very, very cool. Really old book. Really old book. So Nathan Jacobson. And then he looks like he was a professor at Yale University. Volume 1, Basic Concepts. So 1951. Wow. Very, very old book. This is the next page. I think this might be the first printing. Uh, I am not positive. So 1951. Looks like he dedicated the book to his wife. Why not? So here's the preface. And then here is the table of contents. So it starts off with operations on sets, then product sets and mappings, jumps right into equivalence relations, and the natural numbers and division. Then he goes on to semigroups and groups, which is nice. Um, a lot of textbooks uh, don't discuss uh, semigroups at all, especially abstract algebra books. So that's kind of cool. And already on page 26, he's talking about isomorphism. So really, uh, really quick, really quick. Moves to the theory quite quickly. Yeah, already on page 49, um, he's at rings, integral domains, and fields. Wow. So he moves uh, very, very quickly uh, through the topics. I'll try to go slow so you can read the topics. Extensions of rings and fields. Cool stuff. The number of roots of a polynomial in a field. That's on page 104. Rings of functions. That's 110. Factorization theory talks about PIDs, principal ideal domains, on 121. Groups with operators, direct products, modules and ideals. Oh, the Hilbert basis theorem. I remember proving that long ago, page 170. Lattices. The readability of this book is extremely good. The author does a very good job explaining all the concepts, and everything reads really, really well. Uh, the one negative I would have to say about the readability is the choice of variables that the author uses. He uses symbols, and I don't know what those are. I think those are German letters or some type of fancy script letters. And he does this throughout the entire book, um, which is kind of annoying. Uh, it's not a big deal, but math is already hard. So there's no reason to, I think, make it harder by using these symbols. Maybe he thinks they're elegant and they're cool or they're appropriate. That's fine. Um, I would have preferred uh, if the author would have used uh, regular letters. It makes it easier to understand the material. So for me, personally, I have mainly used this book uh, for self-study when I was doing some work with uh, rings and ideals. So I used this book um, as a reference, and I found things in this book that were not in other books. So I thought that was quite cool. Um, so for me, when I think of Jacobson, uh, personally, I think of the book that helped me with some stuff in ring theory. So that's mainly what I've used this book for, in particular, ideals and Netherian rings. This is the second book on linear algebra. It looks like it's signed by someone, 1963. I wonder where that person uh, is now, right? That was a long time ago, 1963. Let's look at the table of contents. This is the linear algebra volume. I think there's only two volumes. I'm not sure. Oh, this is cool. Look, the copyright on this one is 1953, whereas the other one was 1951. So look at the contents. So chapter one starts with finite dimensional vector spaces. Chapter 2 is on linear transformations. Kind of cool. 3 is on the theory of a single linear transformation. I'll go slowly here so you can see the topics. It's kind of interesting because 
the first part is on um, like basic uh, abstract algebra, and then he does linear algebra, right? So some books start with linear algebra, uh, but not not Jacobson, right? Bilinear forms, lots of topics here, right? Tons of stuff. Beautiful products of vector spaces. This is the end of the table of contents. So infinite dimensional vector spaces. Oh, like existence of a basis. Ah, yes. Zorn's lemma. <laughs> Zorn's lemma, if you don't know, is something that's used to prove that um, every infinite dimensional vector space uh, has a basis. So It's named after Max Zorn. So here's the first chapter on finite dimensional vector spaces. And again, you see, I mean, these are just Greek letters, but that annoyance is there. I, I personally don't like uh, having to write those letters. I have a hard time with um, with those particular letters. Again, the readability is pretty good. Uh, it's a great book, uh, but again, the notation he uses uh, makes it a little bit hard to uh, follow along sometimes. Look at that letter there. Great stuff. Now, this is the first edition, uh, I think. So I don't know uh, how the newer editions are. Uh, I'll try to remember to put a link to the book on Amazon in the description, but I think that maybe it's one volume now. I don't know. Uh, I haven't looked, but I'll look after I make the video, and then I'll put a link in the description to the actual book. I think you can get both books, and I think it might be might only be one book. So I'll make sure to put uh, that link in the description. So that's it. Again, the books are uh, Lectures in Abstract Algebra. These are famous abstract algebra books uh, written by Nathan Jacobson, right? Good stuff. Take care.